starting off our list in our number 10 spot, we have the Maui Saurus. These guys are a creature that was once very real, but they are thankfully a relic of our past because they are absolutely horrifying. They are named after the Maori god Maui, who is said to have pulled the islands of New Zealand up from the sea floor, so anything named after him is of course going to be an absolute ginormous beast. The neck of this creature measured around 49 feet long, which is the longest proportionate neck of any animal ever. The entire creature measured around 66 feet, so it's clear that their neck counted for a large portion of their body. But like, imagine a swimming dinosaur creature with a snake for a neck. That's kind of what these guys were like. These guys lived on Earth during the Cretaceous period, which is good news for us, but not so much for the other creatures that lived at the time. Creatures would jump into the water to avoid a T-Rex only to find this guy waiting for them. Yeah. No thank you. In our number 9 spot today we have SCP-169. SCP-169 is a bit of an enigma because it is said that it cannot and will never be contained. There's no structure on earth large or strong enough to hold SCP-169 and while the exact location of it is currently unknown, satellite images suggest that it is located in the southern Atlantic Ocean. SCP-169 is said to be a marine arthropod of massive size and is often referred to as Leviathan. At first, it was presumed that the tales were just myths, but during investigations of supposed paranormal activity, its existence became feared. The creature is estimated to have a body length of somewhere from 2,000 to 8,000 kilometers, and it is thought to have existed since the pre Cambrian era. As far as we know, this single specimen is the only of its kind, and next to nothing is known about its lifestyle. The creature moves quite slowly at a pace of less than one kilometer per week, but it is currently believed that it is just adrift. In the area that is believed to be the current location of the creature, there have been regular seismic tremors detected, and this is thought to be indicative of SCP-169's breathing. These tremors cause minor shifts in the island's terrain, so it is believed that the creature is currently dormant. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Paku. The Paku is a name that refers to several species of fish that actually do exist here on Earth, and they belong to the family of fish that are related to piranhas. There is one reason why these guys freak me out and make me feel like they are from another universe and that is because they have teeth that literally look like a human's teeth. As relatives of the piranha, you'd think that they would have those same razor sharp teeth and the underbite, but that is simply just not the case. In a positive turn of events however, despite their aggressive cousin and their creepy teeth, they mostly feed on plant material instead of flesh and scales, so while they are super uncomfortable to look at, they are not a worry to us at all. What if these fish have weird teeth because they came from a universe where fish have human teeth and humans have fish teeth? How do we know that there is no parallel universe where that exists? We don't. In our number 7 spot today, we have SCP-3000. The area where SCP-3000 currently resides is a region in the Bay of Bengal that is around 300 kilometers in diameter. Because of the creature, any kind of deep sea diving by civilians is strictly prohibited because if any contact is made, the humans will need to be immediately contained, quarantined, and processed for an indefinite amount of time. So what is SCP-3000? Well, it is a massive aquatic serpentine creature that resembles the giant moray eel. This one is a mostly sedentary creature which may be due to its incredibly large size. While its exact measurements are unknown, it is believed to measure somewhere between 600 to 900 kilometers in length. This creature is carnivorous and although it stays in one spot most of the time, that doesn't mean it doesn't have the ability to quickly snap up its prey. It is said that any direct observation or even individuals within a certain distance of SCP-3000 will experience inexplicable head pain, paranoia, fear, panic, and memory loss or altercation. All of this being said, I think it's probably just safe to stay far, far away from this one. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Blobfish. I have spoken about the Blobfish before, and I will again until they get the justice that they deserve. We've all seen a picture of a Blobfish at some point or another. They're that fish that looks like a blob, or they kind of look like that coworker you don't really like, or the person in class who reminds the teacher that there was homework. I'm getting a little carried away, but you catch my drift. 
They aren't cute, and they were even voted world's ugliest animal, and while I understand why, I think the blobfish is a little misunderstood at the moment. These guys like to make their home deep in the ocean, somewhere from 2,000 to 4,000 feet, where the water pressure is much greater than it is up here. If we tried to visit the natural habitat of the blobfish, we would need some heavy duty equipment to keep ourselves safe, because our human bodies do not like that kind of pressure. So applying this same logic, the blobfish fish needs the same kind of protection if it were to come to the surface. Or better yet, we could just leave them alone to live in their little deep sea lives. While in its natural pressure filled habitat, the blobfish looks like a normal deep sea fish, when it is forced to the surface they turn into these blob looking guys that we've all been making fun of. I guess what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, okay, these guys are from our earth, but they're basically from the parallel universe that we call the deep sea. In our number 5 spot today we have SCP-835. This creature is a large mass of coral like polyps with each individual polyp being larger than any known coral species. Some have been measured to have grown over a meter in diameter. SCP-835 has a central mass that is roughly shaped like an oval, with a polyp at each end. While this creature is unable to move around the deep sea, they appear to anchor themselves down by their large tentacles that come off of the polyps. The tentacles not only anchor the creature, but they also help in the feeding process, and they are coated with a sticky adhesive substance. This creature has an extremely hard outer shell, which means that diamond drills have been needed in order to help collect even the smallest samples of the specimens. This creature has the ability to secrete a pretty toxic batch of chemicals, parasites, and bacteria, so the idea of completely cracking one open is not something that is currently an option out of fear. SCP-835 also has the ability to grow at an incredibly fast rate, but it can also slow its own growth, even sometimes halting it for a full 24 hours. In our number 4 spot today we have the Helicoprion. This is the weirdest looking sea creature I've ever seen and I am so glad it does not exist anymore. This is a creature that once swam in our oceans long before any of us were around. These creatures were like sharks and they grew to be around 15 feet long. Their lower jaw consisted of a tooth whorl which makes them literally look like a cross between a shark and a circular saw. Jaws just got a whole lot more terrifying. The fossils found of these creatures have shown us that their teeth were serrated so they most definitely were carnivores, but there has been debate about the exact placement of the teeth within the mel. Does it matter that much though? A shark combined with a power tool is a bad combo no matter what. These these animals were able to survive the Permian Triassic extinction though, which is a clear testament to their survival capabilities, and this might also mean that they lived extremely deep in our oceans. In our number 3 spot today we have SCP-3934. SCP-3934 is a species of amphibious reptiles that see the males growing to be 1.9 meters on average, and the females growing to be 1.7 meters. These guys are omnivorous and like to snack on fish and aquatic flora. This species was first created in the early 20th century with the intent to sell them as exotic pets, and while the exact circumstances surrounding their creation is unknown, it has been confirmed that some share almost identical skeletal structures with historical plesiosaurs. These guys were part of a whole marketing campaign to make them one of the most desired pets, and that just may be where the whole Loch Ness Monster thing comes from. SCP-3934 are very social animals and they love to interact with humans as well. While being created, it is said that their behavior patterns were modeled after Labrador retrievers, so it is obvious that this species also makes a great best friend for man. I mean, aside from the whole we don't live in the water thing. Unfortunately, despite the intentions, they don't make great pets as they have a specialized diet and habitat requirements that are not easily met, and this led to a vast majority of the specimens either passing away or being abandoned by those who once owned them. In our number 2 spot today, we have Leviathan Melvilli. These guys were a kind of whale that existed at the same time as the Megalodon, so of course this means that they had to be quite a strong contender to match up to the Earth's largest predatory shark to ever exist. Their name of course comes from the Leviathan, and I can totally understand why. These are the whales that ate other whales for food. We know how large whales can be, so that is absolutely insane. These guys had the largest teeth of any animal that uses their teeth to eat. Eat. I said that like that because something like an elephant's tusk is technically larger, but elephants don't use those to eat. And they also don't eat whales, so 
there's that. These guys had heads that were 10 feet long and they had the same echolocation abilities as whales today have, which makes them even better and more adapted predators. Like having teeth 1.2 feet long wasn't enough, they also needed to have a few special skills. While blue whales are currently our largest animal on earth, I don't think they would have been able to stand up to these prehistoric whales. In our number one spot today we have SCP-1128. This SCP is a little different than the other ones on today's list and that is because it is more of an etheric entity. This creature has the ability to manifest itself as an enormous aquatic predator, but only to those who have been given its full description of the appearance, so I'll try to refrain from doing that today. People who have been infected by the creature won't really show any symptoms or abnormal behavior, but it is possible that they might show extreme aversion to going into the water. If an infected person enters the water and is fully submerged, no matter the depth, they will completely disappear underneath the surface of the water. Some of the time they will reappear a few moments later in a state of total panic, frantically trying to get out of the water, but other times instead of reappearing above the water, you'll instead see blood and debris cloud the water, with the debris later being able to be confirmed as the vanished person. The lucky ones who have survived have explained that while they had vanished, they were transported to the vast ocean where they were actively being pursued by SCP-1128. I don't know about you guys, but I don't ever want to encounter SCP-1128. Starting off this countdown, we have the Ultra Black Fish. There are a couple of Ultra Black Fish that are so dark that they are almost invisible. At least 16 species of these fish have specialized skin, which makes them almost impossible to detect. Their skin is so unique that they absorb 99.95% of all photons. This makes them blacker than black. Even under a harsh spotlight, these creatures appear as mere silhouettes. That's why it's also so hard to capture a photo of them. One scientist said, and I quote, it didn't matter how you set up the camera or lighting, they just sucked up all the light. So in a way, these fish have a cloak of invisibility, and that's why it's so easy for them to sneak up on their prey. With features like this, it literally makes them seem like they came from another universe. In our ninth spot today, we have the Brittle Star. For this one, I want to take a look at one Brittle Star in particular, and that's one that's named the Game of Thrones Star. That's because its appendages look like the thorny crown found on the second Game of Thrones book cover, A Clash of Kings. Now, what's weird about these creatures is that they don't have any brains or eyes, yet they somehow know what they need to do in order to survive. Like dude, it's literally a brainless organism wandering around the bottom of the ocean, and when fish get close to it, they reach out their tentacles and wrap them in a spiral and then eat them. Take a look at them, they literally look like creepy little brainless aliens. I refuse to believe that they're real, like I mean obviously they are real, but like that's a creature straight out of a horror film. In our 8th spot today we have the Black Swallower. This is a deep sea fish with a big appetite, and it can handle more than it looks like it can. That's because it's slender in size, but its stomach can expand up to 10 times its original size. In fact, it can swallow big fish whole, and then the fish stays in their stomach which gets stretched into transparency. In fact, sometimes their food starts rotting in their stomach before they even get a finish digesting it. No wonder it was given the name the Swallower Fish. Just look at that thing. In our seventh spot today, we have the Pacific Black Dragon. Now, this is one of the sea creatures that is considered to be ultra black, so it easily blends into the depths of the ocean where no light reaches. Now, this creature literally looks like an alien from Predator. Look at this! Look at its creepy beady eyes and sharp teeth and like long chin whiskers. It's undeniably creepy. Now, the males are small. They grow to be about three inches in length. Now, they're the weird ones. They have no teeth, no chin whisker thing, and no stomach. And since it has no stomach, it's unable to eat. Isn't that weird? It literally lives only long enough to mate, and then it dies. Now, the female black dragons are the scary ones. These ones can grow to about two feet. Yes, two feet. And they're the ones with the big fang-like teeth, and they have that whisker or barbell. At the end of that whisker thing, there's this little light that can turn on to attract prey. So fish swimming by are like, ooh, what's this glowy thing? I hope it tastes good, and then they go to eat it, and then the black dragon is like, psych, it's me, and then they gobble the fish whole. They also emit poison, which is very dangerous and deadly to their predators. I swear, this video is making me scared of the ocean now. In our sixth spot, we have the zombie worm. 
In another universe, we have worms that live in the ocean and devour bones. Just kidding, they're real, and these zombie worms are from our universe. Again, I really don't understand how they are real. So these worms are about 1 to 3 inches, so they aren't that big. However, they are very creepy. These tiny things like to devour great big whale bones, and their style of eating is pretty weird, especially since they don't have mouths or stomachs. So basically, they secrete an acid from their skin that is so strong that it can dissolve bones. This then breaks down the bones' fats and proteins from the inside, which they then digest. How delicious. Now, they don't just attack whale bones though, they'll tackle fish bones, even cow bones. I know what you're thinking, how are cows in the ocean? Well, sometimes cows or other animals get dumped into the ocean, so they'll take whatever they can get. That's not even the weirdest part, okay? The weirdest part is that the male zombie worms live inside the female ones. One study counted 111 males inside just one female zombie worm. Just one. Again, how is this real? Like it literally sounds made up. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the hagfish, also known as slime eels. Even though they aren't eels. Now, these ones gross me out because they literally look like human intestines. But what's even more gross are their feeding habits. So basically, they consume other sea creatures by burrowing their way into them. Here's an image of them literally eating a dead shark. They literally create a massive tunnel into the creatures and eat them from the inside out. Ooh. But not only that, they secrete the slime to ward off predators. The slime is so sticky that it can clog the gills of its attackers. Take a look at this video of it repelling a shark. Like what? The shark literally went to chomp it and then it got deterred and the hagfish was left unharmed somehow. Moving on to number four, we have the three-eyed fish. Now, when this creature was discovered in 2011 by an Argentinian man, people went crazy. So he was out on a fishing trip with some friends when he caught this fish, a literal mutated three-eyed fish. Now, it's quite possible that you've heard of this fish before, because in The Simpsons, there is a three-eyed fish known as Blinky. Bart fishes it up near the Springfield power plant in season two, episode four. So people were like, oh my God, The Simpsons predicted this fish. It was especially eerie since the fish was caught in a reservoir where a power plant pumps hot water from their facility and the water is pretty polluted. Honestly, anything with multiple eyes are not from this world. They're just not. In our third spot today, we have the mutant sea creature. In 2018, a strange looking sea creature was found floating along the shore of a beach in China. Everyone was like, what is that? And they were scared to go near it. I mean, it wasn't anything they had ever seen before, but one man wasn't afraid. So he actually went near it and picked it up. And that's when the animal started moving its head and limbs. This creature, who is not yet identified, has a human-like head with some sort of short stubby arms and legs. There is range from a new species of sea life to a mutated starfish or a mutated sea sponge. What do you think it is though? Whatever it is, it's very creepy and alien-like. In our second spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now this is unlike any shark I have ever seen before, and that's because it has the weirdest face ever. Like I'm sorry, but it doesn't look like a shark. That's what I imagine a human crossed with a shark would look like. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. It was thought that 13 feet was the biggest that they could grow to, but in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big these creatures can truly get. Now this thing has one of the creepiest looking faces. It's got a super long nose with a weird Voldemort nostrils, pink flesh, making it look like it was skinned alive, and of course, look at its sharp teeth. But it gets worse. These sharks don't hunt their prey down. Instead, they wait for their prey to come to them. They're just chilling in the water, and once a fish gets close enough, they launch their jaws out and clamp down on them. Yeah, their top and bottom teeth are attached to ligaments so they can reach out and extend its mouth to grab its prey. And its mouth can launch out to about 10.1 feet per second. And its mouth opens super wide. It can open at a 111 degrees angle. And in our number one spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Now this fish 
literally has a see-through head. Not only that, but the thing that you see there, which looks like a brain, is not a brain. It's actually its eyes. Their eyes can rotate in all different directions. They can even look up to see above them through their see-through head. You guys are probably tired of me saying this, but how is this a real creature? I'm sorry, but this fish has a glowing see-through head. Like that's not normal. Number 10, the sea spider. If you're like me and you don't like spiders living on land, well, I have some delightful news for you. They also live in the ocean. There are even giant ones that suck out the lives of their prey. Yup, they latch onto their prey for dear life and suck out any and all fluids they can get their hands on. Yay! Their leg spans are about the same as one of the largest spiders on land, such as the Goliath bird-eating tarantula. I should say they are technically not spiders, the main difference being that they carry their organs in their legs. In fact, they are almost all legs. Though they aren't very dangerous to humans, especially considering they live so far beneath the waves, they would definitely still send a chill down my spine. Thankfully, they reside in cold climate waters, mainly Antarctica. In our number nine spot today, we have the sarcastic fringe head. The sarcastic fringe head is a saltwater fish that is fairly small. They're around 30 centimeters long and are fairly slender with very large mouths. They're pretty aggressive fish and they are very territorial. When they fight other fish, they press their mouths together and that's how they can tell who the bigger fish is and the bigger fish just automatically wins the fight. These things honestly look like they shouldn't even exist. These fish like to make their homes in shells or small crevices, and they have even been found to be living inside of humans' littered soda cans. Luckily, they are so small, they aren't really a threat to humans, but they are just so creepy to look at. Number eight, I love this name. Gulper eels. Gulper eels or pelican eels is another aptly named creature as it's known for its massive balloon jaws. They are black in color and can usually reach around two to three feet in size or sometimes double that and live anywhere between 10,000 to 16,000 feet beneath the surface. Unlike the fang tooth, however, it does have a little bioluminescent spot on its tail to help lure prey so it can open up its jaw and swallow them whole. They also have really small teeth, so they kind of have to. Gulper eels can inflate their jaw and stomach to almost two-thirds the length of their body so they can consume prey larger than their body, hence the name Gulper eels. That's a great name. That's terrifying though. Their primary source of food, however, mainly consists of crabs and shrimp and other small creatures, so if they don't thirst after humans, I shouldn't be scared, right? Raw. What if they get tired of small game and realize the power that they are capable of? Just saying. In our number seven spot today, we have the Atlantic wolf fish. Okay, these guys are named due to their teeth, and honestly, you can totally understand why. On both the upper and lower jaw, they have like six sharp and strong teeth that honestly freak me out. Because of how strong their teeth are, they tend to eat hard shell creatures like crustaceans and mollusks, and they are also important to keeping the sea urchin and green crab population in check. The wolf fish like to stay mostly in one area Area and tend to live in near freezing temperatures. They have such a cool feature though. Because they live in such cold temperatures, they have what is basically just antifreeze running through their bodies so that they don't freeze up. Even though they look super creepy, I do have to admit that that is pretty cool. Unfortunately, these guys have a population that is quickly declining, largely due to being accidentally caught by those who are overfishing. The good news is that they are only a species of concern at the moment, which does mean that there is still time to turn it all around. Number six, the Northern Stargazer. While the Northern Stargazer sounds like a very romantic name for someone who heads north to check out the Northern Lights, nope, we're talking about this guy. This deep sea creature lives in the dark open waters of the Chesapeake Bay, a region in Maryland, USA, where salt and freshwater mix. Stargazers have a flattened black and brown body with white spots along its back. This compressed exterior is perfect for the way they bury themselves beneath the sand with just enough for their mouths and eyes to be exposed so they can keep an eye on food. Once something tasty catches its eye, it opens up its mouth, creating a vacuum and sucks it down like a little snack. Its mouth faces upwards towards the top of its head and its eyes sit right on top so it can look straight up at the stars. Now the name seems clever. 
Look, they don't eat humans, they eat mainly little fish and crustaceans. They're pretty harmless. We should leave them alone, but imagine just for a second, you're scuba diving and all of a sudden you just see this staring up at you. That's enough to give you nightmares. In our number five spot today, we have the Pacific Viperfish. The Pacific Viperfish can be found at different areas in the ocean depending on the time of day. They usually like to stay in the bathyal zone, which is 1,000 meters to 4,000 meters below the surface of the ocean, but at nighttime, they will sometimes rise up into much more shallow water because there is more food for them to eat. It's easy to pick out which fish is a viper fish because of the fact that its jaw is sticking out forward and then it has those extra long pointy teeth. The Pacific viper fish is predatory and mostly eats other fish, but will also chow down on crustaceans, plankton, and shrimp. The fish can grow to be about one foot long and are considered one of the most aggressive fish for its size. I know it's only one foot long, but hearing how vicious it is, coupled with how ugly it is, I really just don't ever want to be anywhere near this thing. One cool thing about these fish though is that they have what is called ultra black skin and it reduces the reflection of anything that is illuminated around them so that they can camouflage themselves easier in the darkness of the deep sea. Number four, ah, uh, the fang tooth fish. Yup, you heard that right. Yes, is it, it is exactly as it sounds. The fang tooth fish has a mouth full of razor sharp teeth perfect for clutching just about any size of prey in its jaw. That's right, any. Any size. But it's fine, it's fine. They live in the deepest parts of the ocean, the deepest having me recorded at around 16,000 feet. That is until they just so happen to feel like migrating up to the surface for a little vacation. Unlike a lot of other deep sea dwellers, fangtooth do not have any bioluminescent organs to attract their prey. That is because they're not the sit and wait kind of predator and instead seek out their lunch using their excellent sense of smell. They are more active than most deep sea dwellers and heavily rely on any light that may seep into the dark home. But oh, I should also mention they're also only seven inches long and not dangerous at all to humans, we think. Tiny but mighty, as they say. In our number one spot today, we have the Colossal Squid. This one already sounds like a horror movie ready to stand beside the likes of Jaws, Godzilla, and King Kong. The Colossal Squid is a real creature that lives in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica. This creature lives up to its name as it reaches an average of 46 feet in size and weighs around 500 kilograms. I'm 5'5", so if it decided to eat me, it could fit eight of me in inside of its stomach or more if I was in pieces. Anyways, they also have large tentacles equipped with suckers that have little razor hooks on them to better latch onto its prey, and let's just hope that its prey isn't you. Its diet mainly consists of large fish such as the seven foot Patagonian toothfish and small ones, and even consumes their own kind. But they've also been known to try and consume larger prey like sperm whales, who often have been seen with scars attributing to their battles they must have faced. If you do decide to provoke one, however, make sure it's not female. Apparently, they're the larger ones. So to conclude, they're colossal, scary, and ambitious. What more could you want from a sea monster? At least now, if you ever wondered where the tales of the Kraken came from, you now know. 